I am not encouraging or advising anyone to modify their firearms. This is for entertainment and educational purposes only. What's up everyone? Not too long ago I posted an in-depth look at the 1911 Sear and Hammer Geometry and Engagement Relationship. I would recommend checking that out before this video if you haven't. In that video I showed that I had a loose sear pin hole in this jig. I have since fixed it and further developed my methods as they relate to inspection and analysis of the 1911 sear and hammer geometry and engagement relationship. That's what this video is about. Kind of a update to my trigger job process. Let's get into it. Not only was this sear pin hole oversized by about nine thousandths, it was also in the wrong location with respect to the hammer pin hole by about 27 thousandths. My dad helped me fix this on the mill in his shop. He is a much more experienced machinist than me. First, we located and zeroed the X and Y axis off the existing hammer pin hole using a 157 thousandths gauge pin and a half thousandths dial indicator. Then traveled the necessary distance in each direction to the correct location of the sear pin hole, according to this diagram from the M1911 manual by Jerry Kuhnhausen. Since there was already a hole there, the point of a drill bit would hit it and just walk all over the place screwing up my location so we established uh, the new hole with a 3 16 end mill first and used a letter c drill bit to create an undersized hole for a 2510 reamer we reamed the hole out which gave us a light press fit with this 0 0.250 drill bushing that has a hole of the correct size for my new sear pin the new pin is a z plus tolerance 111 thousandths gauge pin that i cut to the correct three quarter inch length. I had already fit a hammer pin to this jig before. Now I have two very tight fitting pins. How close did I get to the proper spacing specification from the hammer pin hole with my new sear pin hole? If we look at the diagram, the horizontal distance between the two pins is the difference of these two dimensions, 371 thousandths. The vertical distance is the sum of these two dimensions, 268 thousandths. If we consult the theorem of our good homie Pythagoras, the hypotenuse of the right triangle created by these two dimensions is 0.4576. That is the ordinance specification for the true dimension of these two pins with respect to one another. This is very easy to measure now that the two pins are actually tight with my calipers like so, then subtracting half the diameter of each pin. I got a measurement of four 156 thousandths. That is about one and a half thou off the desired dimension. And these calipers have an accuracy of plus or minus half a thousandth. So I'm somewhere between one and two thousandths off of the correct dimension. I'm pretty pleased with that. I also measured parallelism of the pins along the 300 thousandths width of my sear and hammer. I could not measure any deviation. So that means I'm just within the plus or minus half a thou accuracy of my calipers. Dope. I used this jig and this fixture and microscope to evaluate the sear and hammer hook engagement depth and angle. I was curious how much the difference in the spacing of the pins from the ordnance spec would affect the contact angle of the sear primary and hammer hook faces. With my trigger jobs, I am targeting a parallel relationship. Let's say I establish that parallel relationship between these faces in my jig, then I put the hammer and sear in a pistol frame that has perfect spacing and parallelism between the sear and hammer pin holes, according to the ordinance dimensions, which would be nominally one and a half thousandths different than in my jig. That changes the face contact angle by about 0 0.4 degrees. With my inspection and analysis methods, I would likely not even be able to see that, nor could I even measure it accurately. For the purposes of my trigger jobs, the spacing of the pins in my jig is close enough. I establish rough hammer hook and sear tip geometry in the parallel relationship between the two faces. I calculated that a quarter turn of the adjustment screw on my sear cutting jig results in about a two degree primary face angle change for in spec sear lengths. So I can get this parallel relationship pretty damn close. Once it looks about like this, I snap a picture of it through the microscope at 20x magnification. I upload that into my image editing software where I have a saved calibration file for 20x mag and I can just draw lines on the picture and it tells me the dimensions in question. I have found this to be accurate to within about plus or minus one thousandth of an inch. Here I will confirm my 18 to 20 thousandths tall hammer hooks, a 20 to 25 thousandths wide primary sear face 
and about 10 to 15 thousandths of hammer hook engagement. If any of the measurements aren't where I want them, I take the hammer and sear out and adjust as necessary. These measurements all vary with my desired trigger weight and action and the application of the pistol, but are almost always within the ranges I just gave. I can get the angle close enough to parallel that I don't bother measuring it in the software as it's pretty hard to measure small angles. Of course, the relationship I see in my jig is not gonna be the same once the sear and hammer are in the frame of the pistol. The position and parallelism of the sear and hammer pin holes will vary from frame to frame. I got some gauge pins. I had to slightly undersize them from the spec of the holes called out in the ordnance drawing to account for varying hole sizes and different coating methods of frames. The sear pin is 109 thousandths and the hammer pin is 155 thousandths. On a standard single stack 1911, you can just pop the right side grip panel off and lay the hammer and the sear right on the frame. And you could even use the hammer and sear pin from the pistol. I like the idea of longer pins that contact the holes on both sides of the frame for a tighter fit and a better idea of parallelism. On a double stack 1911, we got this raised frame section for the grip module hugging the sear pin hole. I designed and 3D printed some press on spacers for these pins uh, and the hammer and sear set on top of them. Due to the undersized pins and the variances in frames, this isn't going to be very accurate and the relationship outside the frame up here will likely be different than inside the frame. But this is kind of more of a gut check after I've done more precise inspection and adjustments in the jig. The engagement depth won't change much, but I would be able to see a change in the face contact angle with my microscope and could adjust accordingly. Here's what the relationship looks like on the double stack frame. This is fine to me and I'm going to leave it. I can also use these pins to measure the spacing and parallelism of the pinholes in the frame to varying degrees of accuracy based on the fit of the gauge pins in the holes. I could even throw that dimension in my 3D model and determine how much that should change my engagement angle for a given sear length like I showed a moment ago. That covers what improvements to my tooling and changes to my inspection and analysis techniques I have made in an attempt to improve my 1911 trigger job process. I'm an engineer, so I attempt to quantify everything in my life to varying degrees of success. I am slowly quantifying more and more aspects of my trigger jobs, which give me the qualitative trigger feel I prefer while also making them more repeatable. It truly brings me joy and comfort. I've already redone the trigger job on this Mac 9 and it fucks. The next order of business is trying to get my hands on an Atlas Gunworks Perfect Match Sear and Hammer. They are always out of stock, so I don't know when that will be. When I do, I will make an in-depth inspection and analysis video so we can all get a good look at what the gunsmiths at Atlas Gunworks, who produce some of the best pistols in the world, consider an ideal hammer and sear engagement relationship. I hope you found parts of this video interesting or helpful. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.